From the land down under, with the rock at its center, comes the little Aussie watchman. On Tilo today, God's garden. As I was tending to my garden this week, I was amazed at the variety of colours, flowers and plants that I had grown. I had personally planted them, watered them, tended to them, pruned them. But God grew them. It struck me that this is exactly how God must look at us at times. He plants us, waters us, and tends for us. But in the end, we make the decision to either grow up beautiful or flowerless, formless or majestic, ugly or pretty. Just as I marveled at the beauty of the flowers and the plants, he must marvel at our beautiful thoughts, our actions, and our gestures, taking joy that his creation has turned out beautiful. And in contrast to that, he must feel the heartbreak when he finds what he has planted and watered has failed to prosper, failed to flower, failed to fruit, and has lost its beauty that is innate within it. At times, even though we seem dead, just like me, he continues to water in the hope that it would start growing again in the early spring, like new buds from the stem of a dead plant. And if it fails to prosper, he must take the heartbreaking decision to lay an axe at the base of the tree to clear the dead wood in order to plant something else that he hopes will turn out to be beautiful. When we fail to step into God's will for our life, he will eventually replace us with someone else who will be able to fulfill his will, to make the garden beautiful once more. Pruning at the end of another fruitful season, another walk in the wilderness or life challenge to prepare us for the next season, a new season of fruitfulness, a greater abundance. As I look at my orchard in mid-autumn, I'm already planning when to prune next in order to greatly enhance next season's bounty. So it is with the mighty God pruning us during the winter months, the cold months, the months of heaviness and pain, testing our faith, our patience and our grace, so that we may rise once again eager to do the Lord's bidding. How I'd like to share my garden with others to show them my roses, my acacia plants, my robinias, my lamb's ears, my mystic blue spires, my camellias, my dutch iris, my tulips, my grape hyacinths, the work of my hands. So the Lord wants to show you off to his angels at the day of resurrection, at that great day of the Lord, the marriage of the Lamb, the day of rejoicing and gladness, where there be no more tears and no more pain. On that day, much will be revealed as we are brought forth from our graves to be with our Lord in the sky. A wonderful garden of beauty and fruitfulness, oh, to be planted by the river of the Lord, drinking from his word, and budding fruits for healing, of comfort, of joy, and of truth and grace. <laughs>